so after understanding uh, the pathophysiology uh, about obesity how it is caused why it is caused and what are the uh, way by which we can target obesity uh, let us uh, simplify uh, our approach to patients of obesity if when they come to us how to identify that this patient is obese and needs some attention and uh, how do we grade or stage the obesity so we all have understood by now that bmi approach to assessment uh, of obesity is an old way and at times we miss many of the cases so whenever we initiate obesity management in our patient we need to understand how to diagnose it and the most important thing is that we need to discuss it with the patient that why this obesity is uh, uh, a problem which should be considered most of the time there is a lot of reluctance in the patient and they say ki ha doctor sahab main bahut acha hu i don't have any problem uh, they don't take obesity as a disease so probably we need to discuss with them and let them understand why this obesity should be treated why obesity is mother of all those diseases that we are talking about and then we need to go to treat them so when you start about diagnosis we often have i mean in most of the uh, um opd management uh, tools that we are using uh, we are measuring bmi in almost all of the patients who come so measuring weight and height weight by height uh, meter square gives us the bmi and this has been traditionally used uh, and i would say this is the first uh, screening method of obesity when a patient comes to us and that is bmi this is an objective measure that can be used to diagnose obesity and it is easy to measure at every clinic now we need to understand that bmi cut off values for india is different we all know that indian phenotype is thin obese people and the parameter for obesity in india is bmi more than 25 kg per meter square waist circumference more than 30 for men more than 80 for women waist to hip ratio 0.9 for men 0.8 for women and body fat percentage it's 25 more than 25 for men and more than 30% for women just a recap about how do we classify the weights as underweight normal weight overweight and obesity so bmi less than 5th percentile is considered as underweight now for indian population the 5th percentile comes at 18.5 which usually is 20 when we talk about who standards for normal weight for indian population it's 18.5 to 22.9 kg per meter square which is 20 to 25 for who criteria overweight it is 23 to 24.9 in who criteria it is 25 to 30 i am repeating these just to reemphasize that the cut off values that we are used to based on who criteria doesn't stand true for indian population because percentage of fat that we do have is higher is respective or uh, you know higher for whatever bmi that we do have so when we think about grade 1 obesity it is 25 to 29.9 grade 2 obesity 30 to 35 34.9 and grade 3 obesity is more than 35 so these are five units lesser than who standards for the same grading but with only bmi we may ignore many people who have got normal weight and they are obese because in them percentage fat may be more so this bmi usually under recognizes the problem of obesity in south asian population and there is an emerging concept that patient of normal weight with obesity or normal bmi with obesity who have higher fat percentage and thus when you think about normal weight person reasonable number of them 
may have obesity and that is why we call obese people with normal BMI. Here we need to understand what is healthy obesity. In the previous session, it was being differentiated that metabolically healthy obese and metabolically non-healthy obese or unhealthy people. So if obesity leads to metabolic abnormalities, which includes insulin resistance, diabetes, sarcopenia, inflammation, higher cardiovascular risk or cancer risk. We call it metabolically unhealthy. So even in people with normal weight, they may have all these metabolic abnormalities and then we will call them as metabolically unhealthy, although they have normal weight. Although we did expect that in a normal person, they should be metabolically healthy. Opposite may occur, though it's very less common, that a person may be obese, but he may be metabolically healthy, meaning thereby he may not have all those metabolic abnormalities which I stated right now. That is, he may, despite being obese, he may not have hyperinsulinemia, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. There are higher chances that all these uh, obese people would have some metabolic abnormality. What we call it obesity mortality paradox. So if a person is having normal BMI and is metabolically healthy, risk of mortality is lower, risk of cardiovascular risk is lower and risk of disease associated with these disorders are less. When we call about metabolically healthy, we do expect that patient has less amount of fat. Fat is at appropriate position. I mean, that is not a deposed tissue. That is not, uh, you know, deposited in your abdomen, but subcutaneous fat, healthy fat, metabolizing fat. So there is increased muscle mass, increased fitness, normal insulin sensitivity, normal blood glucose level, and thus they have lower cardiovascular risk. In normal BMI, metabolically unhealthy people, they will have less muscle mass. So their BMI might be normal, but they have higher percentage of body fat. Those body fat are metabolic load on them that leads and these excessive visceral fat is usually associated with reduced fitness, insulin resistance, diabetes, inflammation with higher cardiovascular risk and higher cancer risk. So they are metabolically unhealthy. The meaning thereby is that BMI or obesity may and its mortality is more associated with the metabolic state of a person. There may be conditions where a patient is obese or a person is obese, but he may be metabolically healthy. And that is mostly because they have increased muscle mass. They have got increased fitness. They may have hyperinsulinemia, but they do have good or normal insulin sensitivity. And that's why they do not have diabetes. They, do, they have only milder cardiovascular risk. But most often, obese people have unhealthy metabolism. And they do have excessive visceral fat in comparison to subcutaneous fat leading to all metabolic abnormalities that we are discussing. So let us understand what are the limitations of BMI assessment. This concept of BMI with metabolically healthy and unhealthy gives us a lot of confusion. And that's why we need to put it at one place, what are the limitations of BMI assessment? BMI does not measure the total body fat. So individual with same BMI value can have almost twofold difference in total body fat. It doesn't assess the presence of concomitant co comorbid conditions or disease risk. BMI alone provides no measurement for functionality, quality of life, prognostic contextual factor, or many other factor which characterizes the cl clinical risk. Change in BMI or West circumference do not necessarily reflect an improvement in overall health. Evidence suggesting that several factors, including cardiorespiratory fitness, may, may substantially modify the mortality risk associated with higher BMI. BMI alone is insufficient to guide the clinical decision. So these are limitations. And so we need when we when when the, we see a 
obese patient we need to diagnose them properly define them properly and try to find out are they at risk and what treatment do they need do they need a treatment or not treatment so something beyond bmi has to be understood so we need to move beyond bmi for right assessment of obesity and this is what a proposed clinical staging system of obesity came in this was complementing bmi with a simple disease related and functional staging system and this would provide additional clinical clinical information to guide and evaluate the treatment so this is called demont obesity staging system this is a clinical staging system of obesity here apart from the obes apart from the uh, bmi what we are thinking about three other factors medical factor mental factor and functional factor so if they do have concomitant medical illness is it absent or is it in the preclinical stage like pre diabetes or patient even with a normal bmi has diabetes or patient has got end organ damage like involvement of kidney and heart or patient is in end stage so a patient of say similar bmi may be in either of these five conditions medically mentally or functionally similarly no functional compromise mild functional compromise moderate functional compromise severe com functional com compromise or end stage compromise so for each bmi category we need to put these three factors into it and then stays the obesity this staging system is called edmont obesity staging system why it is important you see the population based study by national health and uh, human nutrition examination survey 1988 to 1994 now when you categorize population based on edmont obesity staging system you can see these graphs differentiating these graphs predicting the survival people in stage 0 or 1 have got maximum survival and people in stage 3 4 have worse survival when the same population is being characterized based on bmi only we don't see these graphs separating which means that classifying obesity based on bmi doesn't give the adequate information and does not identify the target population which needs aggressive treatment this edmont obesity staging system independently predicts increased mortality even after adjustment for contemporary method for classifying adiposity so eoss method becomes important now this is once again a beautiful depiction how this eoss method had patients in different categories depending upon bmi so you can see even those patient who were not ov just overweight had 10% in stage 3 and about 47% in stage 2 so more than 50% of the patient who were not ov but just overweight were under stage 2 or stage 3 of eoss which needed aggressive management of their obesity this is how it differs yes people in class 1 class 2 and class 3 obesity did have majority of the patient who were in eoss stage 2 or stage 3 but few of them still were not in eoss stage 2 or stage 3 that is stage 0 and stage 1 they may not need aggressive management of obesity so despite a lower bmi if disease activity if medical concomitant illness if functional limitations are there patient would need aggressive treatment and that is why it becomes important to classify and diagnose obesity based on eoss method person centered intervention to st stage 1 stage 0 there is no risk factor only primordial prevention has to be given lifestyle modification has to be done stage 1 risk factors are there primary prevention behavioral therapy is to be done stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 there is disease complications and severe uh, severe mental and functional limitations 
these would require secondary and tertiary prevention aggressive medical and surgical therapy wherever indicated let us make it simple by taking a few cases now a 24 year old physically active female bmi is 32 she is obese but as per the bmi criteria but she doesn't have any demonstrable risk factor no functional limitation no mental health issues she is in class 2 stage 0 class i mean obesity class 2 as per the original um, uh, definition but as per eoss method it is stage 0 she needs only behavioral therapy just a prevention to um, uh, just a prevention so that she doesn't gain weight further health benefits for more aggressive obesity treatment are likely to be marginal this is where eoss helps us let us think about second case 32 year old female male with bmi 36 he has got hypertension sleep apnea and depression so he is in stage 3 but stage 2 obesity as per eoss they have clear benefit from obesity treatment let us think about another case 53 year old male bmi 54 disabling arthritis severe hypoventilation fibromyalgia now he is in stage 4 of the obesity aggressive obesity management when surgery is required in this patient so when you put in medical uh, functional and mental limitation into the weight criteria you understand how to approach those patients i would like to summarize assessment of obesity with bmi classification may not be sufficient to optimize the treatment eoss staging system is a simple disease related functional staging system would provide additional clinical information to guide and evaluate the treatment the treatment of obesity should be person centric instead of algorithmic approach that is what the message i wanted to give thank you very much for your patient hearing back to dr ajay sukla